Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this licensing subcommittee on the 21st of March 2024. Um, please uh, note that this hearing will be a live streamed hearing recorded. I'm going to read the protocol for the um, remote hearing uh, procedures that we follow. Only speak when invited by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communications via the chair. Please ensure that your mics are muted when you are not speaking. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time frames. If referred to any written submissions, please refer to the specific page number in the agenda pack. Any new evidence can only be submitted at the chair and the agreement of all parties. If you are having technical difficulties, please use the chat function to alert the meeting or dial in using the details in the invitation. Please do not use the chat function for putting format formal questions to the subcommittee. The chat function actually will not be um, picked up or read during the meeting. Any persistent disruptive behavior will result in removal from the meeting. Once the application has been considered, any remaining parties will be asked to log out of the hearing. Please do so promptly so that the councillors will have the opportunity to, to deliberate and make a decision. Each party will be notified of the decision within five working days. However, if you contact the licensing service the following day, tomorrow morning, you will be given a skeleton decision. I will now hand over to members to invite them to elect a chair. Thank you. I nominate Councillor Smith. Seconded. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome to this evening's licensing meeting. Here's the front page. Uh, 21st of March, 24 at 7 o'clock uh, in the evening. I'd like to show that just for the public record. There it is. The agenda's on the inside sleeve. But before we start, we just go around and we, we have sort of, we do know who people are pretty much already. We just, just go around very quickly and introduce ourselves. I'm Councillor Smith, Stoke Newington Ward, and also Chair of Licensing. Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy, Hackney Wick Ward. Thank you. Councillor Moema. Yeah, Councillor Sam Moema, Hackney Downs Ward. Thank you very much. Uh, Suba. Good evening, everybody. I'm Suba Shriyamana, Principal Licensing Officer, and I will be presenting the report. Thank you. Thank you, Suba. Uh, Amanda. Good evening. My name is Amanda North from Legal Services. I'm a solicitor supporting members this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And Natalie, I know you've got a hoarse voice. <laughs> Natalie, Natalie Kukai, I'm the Governance Officer supporting the meeting. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Chewett? Hi, I'm David Chewett. I'm Team Leader, Licensing and Technical Support. Thank you very much. And Mario's our technical expert. Thank you, Mario, for all you do for us. Um, and then we'll move on to Leo. Can you hear us, Leo? Let's move on to Katie. Sorry, I can indeed. Can you hear me? Yep. Good. Just introduce yourself briefly. Thank you. The Leo Cherylambidi's counsel for the uh, applicant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Katie? Uh, General Manager, the Oakley Lars. Fantastic. And Niall? Niall Ford? Are you there, Niall? I can't see you on the screen, nor can we hear you. Let's move on to Martin Thomas. Hi there, I'm Martin Thomas, owner and DPS of the Old Blue Last. Okay, thank you, Martin. And then finally, Sophie. Good evening, Sophie Asquith. I'm the venue support team manager at Music Venue Trust. Thank you very much, Sophie, for that. Um, Niall doesn't appear to be... That's, oh, here so he is. Sorry, I'm Neil Ford. Um, I don't intend to speak. I consultant put the application in, but I won't be addressing you this evening. Sorry, I couldn't find the speak button. Okay, fantastic. Um, so we'll just go on to the agenda now. So agenda item one, selection of chair, which we've just done. Um, agenda item two, any apologies for absence? I don't think so today. We're all here. Um, agenda item three, uh, do members have any declarations of interest to declare this evening? Uh, Councillor Moema. Hi, Yeah, just... Uh... For transparency, I'm also a London Assembly member and I was invited to a parliamentary launch um, of a report. Um, I didn't attend the rep um, report launch and so this is the first time I am reading it. Thank you for that, Councillor Moema. Um, and uh, agenda item four is minutes of the previous meeting. There are no minutes of meetings today, previous meetings today. Uh, agenda item five is outlining the hearing procedure. 
um, which I shall just go through very quickly. So it works in steps. Step one is the appointment and introduction uh, by the chair. Uh, step two, the licensing officer will outline the report. These are five minutes, by the way. Um, step three, the applicant will present their case. Five minutes in this case, um, Leo, are you going to be speaking on behalf of everyone here? Um, just to get the timing sorted out, because obviously it's five minutes. We're trying to. So speak. yes, for everyone, I'll be doing all the speaking and uh, oh, five fantastic. minutes. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. That's great. Um, step four: responsible authorities um, will come in. In this case, it'll be David Stewart to uh, represent the licensing authority and their objections. Um, step five: other persons. In this case, it'll be Sophie. Uh, all these are five minutes, by the way, and I'm going to be strict this evening. Um, step six is a discussion over 15 minutes. Um, step seven: closing remarks. Step eight, final points of clarification, and then we will ask you to leave and we will go on to consider the verdict. So, everyone happy? Amanda? Uh, Claire, I don't know if it will just assist everybody if you clarify now about the other two applications uh, not proceeding. Oh, yeah. Well. The other two uh, uh, agenda items have been withdrawn. Quite straightforward. So, this is the only one this evening that will be super, We've got all our attention on this. Fantastic. Okay, so, shall we start? I'm just looking out for any... Okay, everyone seems happy, so we'll just carry on. Um, so if I could invite uh, Sue with the Principal Licensing Officer, please, to outline the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So the item we are going to consider this evening is a for a variation of premises license received under the Licensing Act 2003 for the Old Blue, Blo Old Blue Lost for 38 Great Eastern Street. The application is seeking for the extension of regulated entertainment, late night refreshment and supply of alcohol on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, ex extension of hours, removal of conditions 24 and 26, and to amend condition 10. The police have withdrawn their representation based on the updated policies and procedures in place provided by the premises. Representations remains from licensing. We have received additional inform we have re received an additional bundle and the MV MVT report from the applicant, and all these documents have been circulated. I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Suba. And just to clarify with members that you have read all the uh, additional information that was sent through, just nod. That would be great. Thank you very much. Um, OK, uh, so now, uh, Leo, it's your turn. Um, so if you would like to come in and present your case, please. Sir, thank you very much. Sorry for the dreadful lighting. While you were all doing preliminaries, I had to <laughs> leave my office while the internet crashed, come into the living room, different internet system and no one noticed but i'm not feeling hurt so this is a, a really powerful and um, very rare application to be making and i think it's a, a real privilege to be making it because it re relates to a premises that has a very clear and identifiable local identity and uh, local connection it's very much part of uh, Hackney's local uh, culture and local scene. As you've seen from the paperwork, it's recently been accredited by your own Hackney Knights uh, scheme, uh, and it provides an important community cultural uh, benefit. In terms of the practicalities, you'll hopefully have seen through the witness statement of Martin Wade that the operating schedule has been amended in order to reflect the discussions that have been had with um, environmental health and with the police. And, and, and particularly crucially, it's just that paragraph 46, um, where it says there's a condition that there'll be no new entry um, on Friday and Saturday after 2 a.m. And as part of our dispersal policy procedures, the, um, the smoking area will be closed at half past two. So that has a significant impact. Um, the application is very much geared towards uh, resilience for, for these venues. Uh, Councillor Moenwa uh, has um, you know, talked about the invitation from the Music uh, Venue Trust, uh, which is important when one also bears in mind your own policy, which really is seeking to, um, you know, stem the tide, or I should say flood, of high volume vertical drinking venues, which are all much of a muchness. Uh, whereas this venue, uh, the focus is very much on music, on entertainment, on cabaret, on community, uh, and this is what the venue seeks to uh, further achieve. Uh, so you'll have seen another great rarity in the application is the fact that where they 
uh, where the form asks to briefly describe the nature of the proposed application. Um, generally, what you read there is that the venue is going to be food led and for people over 30s or 40s. And here, what you have is a very clear indication of the venue's history. Uh, the fact that it has roots back to the 1700s, the way it's operated from the early 2000s as a grass muse, uh, as a grassroots music venue, uh, and the way in which it is being uh, culture-led uh, and promoted. And then you can see the full support uh, and background. And then the reference to your own policy, which says, we want more of these kind of venues. We want the kind of venues that are uh, community-led and their alternatives to the late night uh, drinking culture. Uh, and you can see from the witness statement provided by uh, Mr. Mr. Thomas, but that's exactly, uh, you have that, yes, so that, that, that's the witness statement, uh, which really expands on the uh, detailed uh, application in the, uh, in the application form. It, it talks about the uh, nature of the club nights, uh, the event nights, the music nights, the way in which being able to have two offerings, longer offerings, the way in which keeping people in the premises, uh, benefits dispersal, there's a slower dispersal. We have, a, we have a very distinct crowd of people that follow the events and the activities that we, that we put on. So rather than having the curtain drop and just like a theatre or the cinema where everyone piles out into the street, what we're able to do is have a follow-up act, we're going to be able to have um, alternative shows, extra shows. One minute. Thank you. And it'll mean that uh, people will uh, trickle out. Uh, I'm pleased that, in effect, the police and environmental health have endorsed our application. Uh, the Music Venue Trust, an independent charity, is supporting us and that we're able to speak to your policy. So, I know how important time limits are. I'll keep to my time limit and I commend the application to you, sir, as amended with your responsible authorities. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. And just to give members an opportunity for any points of clarity at this point. All good. Thank you very much. OK, great. Thank you very much, Leo, for that. Um, so if I could invite uh, Mr. Stewart now to come in with your representations. Mr. Stewart, off you go. Thank you, Chair. So the representation I made is at Appendix B2 in today's agenda. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's fairly straightforward. As we've heard, uh, it's a long established pub it's in a prominent location in Great Eastern Street. And as it is known for live music and uh, you'll no doubt help hear support from um, the Music Venues Trust on that. Um, I've visited the pub for, um, for work, for pub watch meetings, etc. And uh, you know, that it exists and it's a popular pub in a shortage location uh, but we are just uh, dealing with an application that's seeking additional hours in an area where there's the uh, recent research suggests uh, it's suffering from cumulative impact um, so within my representation i set out some of the recent findings um, <clears throat> so we, we are seeing some high levels of crime such as thefts, robberies and violence, uh, significant levels of on-street urination, uh, large numbers of calls to the London Ambulance Service. And as, as a result of those those sorts of things, we're having to deploy uh, significant resources, whether those be um, enforcement officers, uh, colleagues at the police uh, also. Um, I carried out a site visit to the premises last week where I met with uh, Martin, Katie and Neil. Um, they showed me around the premises again as it's been a few years since I've been there myself. Uh, noted some significant cosmetic works being undertaken, uh, including the installation of uh, reclaimed wood paddling, uh, uh, wood panelling. I noted um, a sound limiters in place, secondary glazing, etc. So, the premises is operate to, the, to a high standard. Uh, we're very much grateful for that. Um, but uh, in my representation, I make reference to uh, some findings during a, a compliance visit, which was undertaken, undertaken in January. Um, immediately after that uh, representation was sent to uh, Mr. Ford, uh, Mr. Thomas called me and provided a bit of uh, background of um, to, to what, to what uh, the colleague that I um, that visited on behalf of licensing had found. So. There, there was some, uh, there was some concern about um, 
what appeared to be a reluctance to view CCTV, but what I actually found that when I went to the site myself, I realized that um, the CCTV monitor is located up some quite steep stairs. So it was actually quicker for the um, for that uh, manager to show my colleague the CCTV on a mobile device. Um, there were some other things as well about in relation to recorded music being played at the third floor level, but um, we realized how that had came about. So although there might be some need to uh, regularize that depending on the outcome of tonight's application, uh, but it was it, it is something that we're, we're not too concerned about. Um, having had those discussions and uh, having undertaken that site visit. Uh, so just to summarise at this this point, um, it really is just the potential cumulative impact um, on the wider area, uh, but no concerns about how the venue operates itself. And I'll leave it there for now, Tia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any points of clarity there, members? David? Uh, Councillor Kennedy? Uh, yes, David, can you expand on how it how that music did come about? The music, sorry, Councillor on uh, the recorded uh, music was being played. How did it come about? There is a a connection for uh, if if a group had hired the room and they plug in uh, a source, so an iPad, for example, a, a phone that was plugged in. And but it wasn't recorded music from the entertainment point of view, so it wasn't a, it wasn't like a DJ or something like that. It was um, being played at background level. Thank you, Amanda. You're on mute. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, just uh, two quick points. I don't know if it assists you at this stage or if you want to deal with it later. Is um, asking uh, the licensing officer about the conditions that uh, have been requested in the application, and also yeah. about the second floor. Yeah, I was just about to do that very thinking. thing, man. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> so, David, um, just on conditions 24 and 26 that relate to building control and the secondary glazing and all that kind of thing, are we? they say in their pack that that's all been covered. Um, are you happy with that? And then, uh, obviously, the other one, condition 27, in relation to music on the second floor. I know you mentioned the third floor. Um, can, can you just talk about what happened on the second floor and are you happy with these conditions, the new ones that have been put in, the ones that we have taken out? Yes, I'm happy with the conditions. I've got no concerns about those. Uh, second floor. Yeah, you mentioned in your, your uh, representation, this was despite condition 27, which states uh, there shall yeah. be no live or recorded music permitted to be taken place in the second floor licensed area at any oh. one time. So d d is that is that okay? Is that what's 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 happening uh, there? Yeah. So that was um, so that reference I just made to uh, the visit uh, that we undertook in January. The uh, what the officer found was a source plugged in by customers, or I think it was a private hire of that space. Um, so it wasn't entertainment in that respect, um, but it is something that probably could be clearer in the license. So a customer plugged in their own source of music rather than a DJ be providing entertainment in that respect. Okay, Leo, you can address that in the discussion maybe as well, if you don't mind. Um, okay, uh, any other points of clarity, members? No, okay, great. So Sophie, it's over to you. And I just want to remind you um, that, you know, economic factors is one thing. We're not really looking at that. Not, 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 not in this meeting. Um, just to uh, say that uh, it should be your your submission should be in line with the four licensing objectives where possible. Um, you know, and repetition should be avoided. Points made uh, that do not relate to the licensing objectives cannot be taken into consideration when making a decision. So, if you if you can, please try and relate what you want to say. We've read your submission, by the way. It was excellent. Um, um, so, if you could just stick to the as far as you can to the licensing objectives, I'll just remind you what they are. Prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, prevention of public nuisance, and protection of children from harm. So those are the four. So off you go. 
Thank you. Um, there were parts of my statement which obviously have related to more of the stats of the annual report, but I will summarise with the licensing objectives at the end. So thank you very much. Um, as I said before, my name is Sophie Asquith and I'm the Venue Support Team Manager at Music Venue Trust. Music Venue Trust is a UK registered charity that founded in 2014, which acts to protect, secure and improve the UK's grassroots music venue circuit. And um, thank you for letting me speak to you tonight. Um, Music Venue Trust is pleased we've recently worked in collaboration with the Hackney Council to strengthen outreach between the Council and the Borough's grassroots music venues through projects in collaboration with Hackney Nights and your business friendly licensing initiative. Grassroots music venues like the Old Blue Last are spaces where new and emerging artists get their early opportunities to perform live and to build a fan base. For this reason, Old Blue Last is a research and development hub and a social and community asset, and people are drawn to them for their cultural output. And I would like to start by giving some national context and tie that into why we think that's crucial that the council support this application. And that's why we provided members with a copy of our 2023 annual report. So you can see those facts for yourselves. Through data collected through Music Venue Trust's most recent annual survey, we reported that 2023 was the worst year for venue closures since Music Venue Trust was founded. And once a grassroots music venue closes, it often does not reopen. And this has had a, had a devastating impact on local communities up and down the country, cutting off access to culture. In my role, I manage and deliver Music Venue Trust's emergency response service, which provides grassroots music venues with a tailored action plan to support them through crises and challenges. And the emergency response service dealt with 164 cases last year, with over a quarter coming to the service through challenges focused on financial viability. The average grassroots music venue is operating on a 0.5 profit margin, which is when you then factor in rising energy prices, rent reviews and pre-profit taxation, volatile trading conditions. It begins to give you a sense of how difficult it is to operate a grassroots music venue in 2024. And whilst 2023 might have been the most challenging year to date for our membership, we believe it's important to stress that it's not through lack of desire to use these spaces. Our annual report recognised over 23 million individual visits through the doors of grassroots music venue sector in 2023, which was an increase on the year prior. Audiences are attracted to the Old Blue Last because it's known for its innovative, high quality programming and its local national and international reputation for breaking artists and bands. So as you can gather from what I've said about the current trading conditions, venues are increasingly having to diversify their late night programming to ensure that they can attract a regular customer base and remain financially viable. And it is vital therefore that the committee understand the dynamics of the live music industry when considering this application. It is the income generated by late night club nights and additional sales over the bar that allows- Two minutes to withstand the losses often incurred in programming new and emerging artists. And this is a trend we are seeing nationwide. Music Venue Trust is confident, therefore, that granting this application would allow the venue to build a more robust and resilient operation and therefore strengthen the cultural provision of the area. The Old Blue Last is a very active member of our Music Venue Alliance as an, and has engaged with our resources and guidance on best practice. It is a safe space where the local uh, music community come together to feel to feel part of a genuine fandom. And on a personal level, as a woman in the live music industry, I know that Old Blue Last to be a safe space that's always welcomed myself and other music lovers for years. I've been attending shows there as a gig goer throughout the 10 years I've been in London's music industry. And Music Venue Trust is confident that venue operators will continue to work in partnership with the responsible authorities and professionally and cohesively alongside local businesses and residents. I would like to finish by saying that this is this meeting presents an opportunity for the council to proactively support a venue that you should be incredibly proud of. In my view, Hackney would not be Hackney without the Old Blue Last, and supporting this license application ensures the best opportunity for the venue to get through this difficult economic period so that they can remain financially resilient and continue to function as a dynamic and successful grassroots music venue for decades to come. This license change is vital to ensure the future of the venue. Thank you. Okay, you've got 30 seconds left. You've addressed a little bit of public safety there, Sophie. We'll give you the opportunity to just maybe talk about public nuisance. You know, your experience of going to the venue and crime and disorder, maybe just, just 20 seconds on those two. Um, I've never uh, experienced a, a crime and disorder whilst present at the venue. I've always known them to be an incredibly kind of conscientious and um, best practice operator. And I've, I've always felt safe there as a gig goer. So I wholly support this application for those reasons. Yeah, and what about dispersal? How are things on dispersal? I've always seen a very kind of um, 
very conscientious and thorough attitude towards dispersal. And I think that, as Leo um, alluded to in his representation, this would allow a slower and more considered dispersal. And I think that's positive. It's something that Music Venue Trust recommends in our um, support to venues. OK, thank you very much, Sophie, for that submission. Thank you. Great. Um, so I'd like to invite members now to uh, just lead the discussion. So off you go. Who wants to go first? You want to come in, Chris? Councillor Kennedy? Yep, off you go. Um, thank you. So, uh, well, we've just got our, our licensing officers' um, uh, representation, um, haven't we? And um, is it fair to sum up what you said, David, by saying that um, if, if there was no um, uh, survey that we'd done that showed the cumulative impact of having so many people with alcohol inside them in that area, you'd be entirely happy for this um, application to go forward, even at, even at these hours? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, there, there are other policy considerations of work as well, uh, core hours policy. Um, but, but essentially, yes, um, there, there is no presumption to refuse applications at present. There's no special policy area. Um, but there is this evidence that we have of community impact, as you say, that we've uh, very, very recently commissioned and, and, and found. So, so that, that is the concern. That is the consideration that, um, that I'm putting before members this evening. Um, and so one one for Amanda then, without a special policy area in place, we don't have one at the moment, um, how how strong, how much weight should we as a subcommittee give um, to consideration of cumulative impact? You can and attach weight about the uh, cumulative impact because although there isn't a policy in place, there is um, evidence and um, you can, um, in accordance with the um, licensing guidance, um, you can take into consideration issues about cumulative impact and the impact on the area. Um, members would be aware anyway of the nature of how the Shoreditch area operates. So that isn't something that's new to you. Um, and it's um, just assessing, um, you know, the location and, um, you know, the impact it will have um, having these additional hours in the area. Um, but you can take, you can rely on the evidence that's been presented to you today by the licensing officer. Councillor Kennedy, are you happy with that? Um, well, yeah, I'd like to hear what um, uh, Leo has to say um, about that, because it, it seems that as the only bit of evidence is, well, these extra hours will add to cumulative impact, and we've got a report that says there is cumulative impact there. Um, looks like that's leading us towards declining it chair if i can just uh, intervene to say that we need to take it into context with how the premises have been operating and also the fact that they've had temporary event notices um, a number over the last year and yep. uh, you can um, question if you wish to uh, the licensing officer on his view as to how those temporary event notices operated because they operated until 4 a.m in the morning which is yep. later than the actual application which yep. is speaking until 3 a.m yep. so you you can take into consideration how they conduct themselves their processes and procedures um, to see whether or not they're a responsible operator and um, whether or not they're likely to um, adhere to what our expectations are um, in the yeah. absence of our policy. Thank you. Yeah. Leo, before you come in, I'll just let David answer that question about the, the tens, David. How did they go? Um, were there any complaints? And also, just that little bit of triangle with the old blue last is, is there any kind of concrete evidence specifically around sort of within 100 yards of that, of that particular spot? you know, on cumulative in impact. And I know that it's not particularly residential at that particular location, it's mainly commercial. So I'd like a view on those two things, tens and, and location, specific location. Firstly, uh, to answer the question about tens, I'm not aware of any specific issues that have arisen as a result of those tens that are listed there. I think uh, for the last 12 months, um, pretty spread throughout the year. So I, I'm not aware of any specific concerns as a result of those that have come to my attention mm. um and likewise i would have expected colleagues in 
uh, environmental protection or um, the police uh, to highlight um, any issues that they may have had as a result of those those yeah. temporary rent notices as well. Mm. Uh, and then to answer the other question about that specific area, I think well generally um, the Shoreditch area suffers. So uh, the research that was recently undertaken um, encompasses the triangle, the area, the, the area of Shoreditch, if you like, Old Street up towards mm. Old Street roundabout, if the, not roundabout anymore, but Old Street, the junction, uh, and down south um, towards the border with um, with Islington, slightly to the southwest and yeah. city and to Tower Hamlets to the to the east. So uh, there are issues spread throughout that area. Um, some hot spots are hotter than other parts of Hackett, yeah. um, parts of that yeah. area. I think that's uh, the question. Is that a hot spot? That uh, area. There are hot there are hotter spots within the hot spots. If you like. <laughs> so the whole the whole area is is yeah. effectively a hot spot. Fantastic. So when, when we look at our um, research and uh, the research that my uh, analyst colleague does, Shoreditch is a hot spot in the yeah. borough as a whole. But yeah. within within that hot spot, there are areas that are hotter yeah. than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Moema, I know you want to come in, but I'm just going to let Leo come in to sort of address some of the, the, the issues that have been spoken about just now. Thank you, Leo. So thank you, and I'm grateful to, to Amanda and, and David. Uh, Councillor Kennedy uh, uh, and colleagues, you do have a lot of evidence. Firstly, you've got a long-standing menu that has operated beyond core hours, so it operates outside your policy already with no issues. Uh, you know, David's absolutely right. We've been there since the noughties, and we've not had any issues. We've operated uh, the full complement of TENS across all the weekends, and there's no direct uh, history of uh, complaints. Uh, and crucially, you also have evidence of the type of venue we are, which is not a high volume vertical drinking establishment, but a venue that strives to be and operate as a grassroots music venue. So even in this kind of area, the, the point is, and the, and the valuable point made by uh, Sophie from the Music Venue Trust is, if these venues are not supported, they will close down. And even with your core hours, you'll probably end up with another generic drink-led establishment. By allowing a later venue to thrive, operating in an alternative way, that meets other aspects of your policy, because your policy isn't just about cumulative impact, it's also about cultural availability, it's about diversity, it's about diversifying the nighttime economy. You're advancing your policy uh, in other ways. And then the final piece of evidence is the level of cooperation that you can see from this applicant with the responsible authorities. Environmental health came in, and I don't know if you saw the um, rep before, they, um, before it was withdrawn, but a very, very thorough, uh, I think it was three, three, maybe four pages, representation there then followed discussions with the operator. There followed some amendments of the um, operating schedule, and they withdrew. The police, who are your experts on crime and disorder, community of impact, and so on, withdrew their reps after a uh, discussion. And then, of course, uh, David very generously uh, said that other than the potential for cumulative impact, rather than actual cumulative impact, he wouldn't have any objections. And indeed, any of his complaints around what happened on the second floor and the freestanding speaker, uh, the sound system, is addressed at paragraph 55 of our witness statement. Mm. So we have a very clear answer for that, and it's been consistent all the way through. So this is why this operator is presenting you evidence to suggest that in so far as its patrons and its operation and its late night hours might seem to be against your policy, uh, I would suggest to you that taken all together, it suggests that the impact would be minimal, if not beneficial, so that you had less adverse community impact. There's a difference between a noisy crowd say, for example, leaving the latest Terminator blockbuster at 11.30, and then a gentle crowd dispersing, albeit later in the evening. And it's these um, nuanced factors that are particular to this case, which is how I submit you ought to approach the application before you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Councillor Moema, would you like to come in? Oh, yeah, thank you, um, Councillor Smith. 
I just wondered, um, Sophie, you started talking at a bit of a macro level and um, slightly ran out of time before talking about the specifics of um, the positive nature of this venue. But I just wanted to ask Martin, actually, if you wouldn't mind um, just expanding on, um, not expanding, but just kind of going to a little bit more detail and your submission about how as the manager and the owner, sorry, the DPF and the owner, you're addressing the points that David has made, because it seems like those are things which could be conditioned. Um, is that correct? Is that my correct assumption, David? That in principle, there's no issues with management or anything. These are things that could be fixed and then proceed. Do you, do you mean those things that I've highlighted in uh, at yes. the end of the representation? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, fairly straightforward. I think um, that yeah. the, the intention is to, to um, in my conversations with Mr. Ford, uh, the intention would be to, to rectify those dependent on the outcome of, of this application. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Martin? Yeah, I was just going to say, obviously, David did raise an issue with the with this slight issue with um the well, it was basically an iphone got plugged in so our speaker jack which we've actually since then we've moved that to behind the bar so that can never happen again um we've like i've been there for 20 years and i've basically built a life in hackney and i love this borough and everything i've done is to improve it and we've always worked very closely with not just the police licensing, it's also our, our neighbours as well. We've got a really good relationship with all of our neighbours. Um, and I don't want it to be cause any problems for anybody, which is probably why the police have withdrawn their objections and environmental health have withdrawn their objections because we don't cause problems. We, we run a very busy venue, but we work very hard with our security team who've worked with us many years and every time there's changes to what happens in the area we do engage like we've we've worked with the nighttime economy team um and we i'd say we we're best practice in the area yeah so anything within our license that we've got there we can we've already got we've already proved that we can actually operate the, the venue responsibly and during our temporary event notices which go way beyond the hours that go we've never had issues with them being granted or operating them in fact what i tend to do is i just i, I go overboard on everything is you can probably read our, our operating schedule of what we do it is quite robust and yeah. that is checked regularly Okay, no, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Great. I would like to ask you a question, Martin, as well. Um, in regards to the, the noise limiter um, condition that you've accepted, um, obviously that's for recorded music mainly because doing that for live music is impossible. You can't, you can't plug every instrument into the limiter, basically. Um, what time do your live acts normally finish before you start going to, you know, to, to, to recorded music um it, it does depend but on weeknights usually 11 30 but at the weekend we, we will go we'll we'll go all the way up to the end of our licensing hours we so like currently when, cu currently the current ones yes so therefore what you're you're, you're finishing then at uh, 1 30. Like about 1 30 but obviously yeah. you wouldn't be running the live music right up till 1 30 would you no usually it's... about usually usually half an hour 45 minutes before then um, and then that helps with dispersal but with on temporary event notices we've gone way beyond that till three o'clock in the morning it's like the actual where the live music is it is actually triple glazed we we have a first layer of of single glazing then another layer then another layer when we originally got the license we had to soundproof it completely and we as you can tell in multiple years environmental health have never had any any issues yeah. 
Because you've mentioned so, sort of diversifying the offer to cabaret and comedy and yeah. LGBT events and things like that and other things. Um, we already do some of those already. Uh, I mean, I suppose my kind of worry, really, I suppose, is 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 really what time you finish the live music at. Um, yeah. uh, it does concern me a little bit, the idea that that might be going on very late. So I'm wondering, Leo, might it be possible to discuss sort of a condition around what time that finishes at come to an agreement maybe i don't know what time uh would be yes. good for you martin but just to sort of speak about that really well we could um, so if the, the, the live music tends to be uh, a, a smaller capacity so it could certainly finish and come to a close sooner because the way the venue wants to operate is that it wants to run effectively uh, two shows but what we could look at is bringing the live music venue element uh, closer and ensuring that there's say a good hour to an yeah. hour and 15 because because an hour leaves you the space well an hour and 20 leaves you the space to convert to cabaret or comedy or stand-up a good stand-up is between 45 and um and 60 minutes you tend to have uh, as has been explained to me a um uh, a warm-up an introduction a main set for 30 to 40 minutes and then uh, a, a close so we could do that the same with cabaret the model is something like the soho theater if you go down to the basement the soho theater or or, or, or the top level it means that there's a very quick turnaround you've got a, a blank screen the the sound equipment is all in place as you've heard the the rooms that we're in are are, are contained uh, and it means that there is less of an impact on uh, on on dispersal yeah. uh, and so full control so certainly that that can be achieved just by way of the programming yeah uh, in terms of the condition if i just look at the uh, look at the hours to allow for maximum flexibility because uh, i think it's important for a cultural venue that wants to have live entertainment to have that um, yeah, it's, li it's live bands really i suppose is the key thing isn't it live yeah. bands i i and I'll check with uh, Martin, but I think um, on a Friday and Saturday, it would be half one to two o'clock, really, wouldn't it? To then give you the time to turn around. So, if, so Martin, if you were to have a restriction on live bands up to a certain hour, and then sort of almost non-music led cabaret. Well, you can still have recorded music after that, I think. You, you know? could. Yeah. Yeah. So for, yeah. So you could have it after that. That would that would assist resilience, but also assist with your, your cultural offering, wouldn't it? Yes, that that that, that would. I, like we would we'd be happy to put a a time limit on live music, partly because also although we'd like to have be able to like we currently can operate live music until one o'clock at the moment anyway which we do yeah um that, that even if it was just a small increase on that wouldn't wouldn't have a major impact because we would be able to kind of disperse people out i think one of the yeah. points about everything we're doing here is we we're closed we're, we're closed last entry at two o'clock so there's no new people coming into venue. Yeah, exactly we're closing the smoking area at two thirty two thirty yeah. so everyone outside has come in yeah. And then there's that dispersal. So if you had the live music club up till, in, up till two, say, two, yeah, two. yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, yeah. that, that, that certainly makes me feel more comfortable. I can see Casmo Emma's nodding her head. Um, David, you want to come in at this point? You look worried. But can <laughs> I ask a controversial question after David? Yeah, sorry, David. Mm. No, no, it's just a question because the the condition agreed with uh, environment protection is for um all uh all amplified sound to go for a sound limiter so uh, the thing and, is, and is, is set, set to their satisfaction yeah, well the, what we the, use the thing is, is, we the use thing is the, sorry one second it, it's very difficult to put drums through a sound limiter do you understand it's not it's not amplified you can't or even a guitar or whatever you know well everything um, we have goes through a sound system we have a sound engineer so so that that Presumably, that um, uh, depending on the type of sound limiter you're using, it it cuts the cuts the power to the to the um, sister to the 
the instruments that don't go through the um yeah, I think uh, all, all actually, of the instruments that go through the mixer, isn't it? I think, the, so, I think the condition says actually that it that it basically doesn't disturb our neighbours, which we haven't disturbed our neighbours in the entire duration of the time we've been there. Yeah, but so, then we just come in there with 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 the sound limiter, sir. So what will happen is if you've got uh, an acoustic or bass instrument such as the drum, there's typically uh, effectively a mic that picks up that noise and then amplifies it and puts it through the system. It's that process that is able to be regulated by the sound yeah, limiters. Yeah. What it tends to do is one of two things. Either there will just be a ceiling or there will be a, a, a system whereby the different frequencies are varied so that it creates a good sound, but also regulated sound so that it can't uh, go above above those um above yeah. those limits so yeah. we can we can look at live music in that way to ensure yeah. that it doesn't have the impact and in fact because of the design of the building uh you know the noise levels we can make are actually quite great it's actually sort of a more um dispersal that might be an issue but the the, the, the question that i have is that many djs uh for example consider themselves um rightly musicians because they've had take... 20 minutes on this now folks by the way so okay they, yeah they, 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 they take music and move on but the other thing is that even a comedian might sing or a cabaret mm -hmm. say for example a drag performance might include um might include lip syncing or mm -hmm. or or, 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 or ad-lib which in the sense might be live so i think we just need to be a little bit careful about about that though i agree with you that two o'clock should represent a watershed of intensity but the definition of how that um is is imposed might need a little bit of examination but it but in principle i think it's um it's as you as you've heard from martin something that we can accept yeah it's just maybe i think bands would be the, my, my issue really sure. yeah um fundamentally okay, uh, okay well, members do you want to perhaps sir the wording might be uh bands with, with you know using amplification and then that way the venue uh knows that it's about groups of musicians um yeah pr primarily pr perhaps we could look at that thank you can i just um yeah come in one into interlude i wouldn't like because of the fact we'd have enough time after what we're currently doing i wouldn't even mind having that last live music at half one that would wouldn't be a, be an issue because we're gonna we're not gonna allow new people to come in anyway, so well, that's that's, just, that's up to you. I mean, yeah, I would I'd be happy with that. Okay, well I'm, we can I'll, we'll note that and then we can discuss yeah, that in the decision. If that if that was a concern of yours, I'd rather. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I think we've sort of finished on the discussion there. I think, folks, I'm just looking around to see if that's okay with members and everyone else. Yeah um okay so let's just go to uh, council kelly was that a hand i saw there no you're okay brilliant um let's move to closing remarks then so if i could start with mr chewett and just your reflections on what you've heard and how you feel now and i know your hands are tied a little bit but off you go uh I've, well not, nothing really further to add at this stage uh no it's closing remarks but we've heard um uh, that the venue supported it, seeks to um, uh, support grassroots music, live music, um, diversified what we've got in Shoreditch also. Uh, we've heard that there's um, no concerns other than from myself, so from uh, local, uh, from the police, from my colleagues in environmental protection. Um, so, so that's it really. I think the, the dispersal or the last entry uh, time that would help help with this, the dispersal. So, other than that, I've got no real concerns. Obviously, than what I've talked about, the potential impact on on the community effect in the area. So that's it, really. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. And uh, I'd just like to invite Sophie. Do you want to come in just for two minutes? Um, I have no further comments. Thank you. I've no further kind of comments or um, certainly no more concerns. Um, I think that everything that's been said is a testament to the venue's kind of proactive and very diligent level of operation. And um, as a music industry user of the space and as a gig goer user of the space, I've always felt um, 
very kind of aware of that good level of operation and I've known many people visit and use the venue know many of my friends have worked in the venue promoted promoted shows in the venue um, I know it's been incredibly kind of like conscientious um, best practice space and um, now with my music venue trust hat on I'm very pleased to support this application from a sector-wide context we understand its importance and on an individual and local context we um, fully support its importance so um, yes thank you very much for your time yeah thank you Sophie for that and finally over to you Leo so thank you um, I, I do commend the application to you it seems to me that your concerns are around the intensity of operation particularly around live music after uh, two o'clock in the morning uh, it's clear that the condition agreed with um, and offered after meeting with the responsible authorities no new entry on Fridays and Saturdays after 2 a.m will do that because you couldn't have anything new and so it strikes me about whether we, whether there needs to be a condition dealing with live music or entertainment after 2 a.m and trying to control or regulate its nature could be perceived to be censorship but the idea of there being something of less intensity and I've run out of brain power to suggest something to you um, at the moment, but um, it is acceptable. I'm just um, struggling with the, with 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 with, um, with the wording. It could either be that there is no live music after two a.m., or, or it's limited to uh, live entertainment of which music is ancillary something yeah. like that but I'm, I'm sorry i'm not more more helpful yeah, but i think sure. the condition about no new entry would actually meet all your concerns thank you very much i think martin this is not for new evidence now thank you okay and the word uh bands leo are you re resisting the word banned um, i do think so because again for example if we had a performer um that um had a, a piano and a, a small piece of acoustics that could amount to a to a band um so i'm just trying to think um whether whether that would be i understand what you're trying to achieve i'm just trying to find good language so that we can we can we can get it right um because we all understand what it means when you say no live bands after 2 a.m but if for example i was to get a a drag queen and a piano and someone on a you know a very small drum kit for acoustics or rhythm or beat then the the venue would be in breach of the wording if not the spirit of the um well we could say oh, bands oh, with a drum kit maybe how about that yes 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 i would I was going to suggest no amplification or limited amplification, but of course you need it. it you need amplification, even if it's just a spoken word. Um, and it, it may well be that you put the condition in and then add an informative that says, you know, after 2 a.m., we expect to see something of, a, of an intensity that is lower than what is typically understood as a live band. Okay. Well, we can, we can work. maybe work on that one. Amanda, sure. Amanda will be in contact with about that yes um okay uh, i thank think you. that's that's it everyone thank you very much for attending this meeting um i think we've had a good hearing tonight and uh, just uh, everyone go on to have a uh, uh, a good rest of your evening thank you so, very much thank, thank, you. You. thank you bye thank you thank you, bye. Thank you everyone thank you thanks everybody thank you